This is my interview with David Kirk Trailer, recorded for my documentary The Making of Day of the Tentacle for this is 30th anniversary. David voiced several characters for the game including Ed Edison, Ben Franklin and Thomas Jefferson. He's had a lengthy international career in acting and dubbing and I'll leave an IMDB link below for anyone curious. His video game credits are fewer but he did also notably provide voices for Fate of Atlantis. He's well known as a comedian, particularly for his character Zed, also known as David Zed or Zed Robot, with which he's had several TV shows. There are links to David's socials and website below, and links to the full playlist of interviews and the full documentary. We actually ended up talking more about the voiceover and dubbing industry in general rather than Day of the Tentacle, but it's an amusing and interesting chat nonetheless. As always, I've edited out some pleasantries at the start, so we'll jump right in. Enjoy. So yeah, I mean, I suppose go before before that, um, like when you phoned me the other day, I thought, and I, you know, I'm familiar with, with your work anyway. But when you phoned me yesterday, I thought, wow, the, your voice is just so, um, you know, such a distinctive voice. So when did you kind of realise you had a knack for voices or doing voiceovers and stuff? Well, really, I started off as I'm a comedian as well, and mm -hmm. I started off doing impressions in my my act. A basic ones at first, you know, and, and stuff that's not very relevant now. Uh, I, I, it, I, I went into radio as soon as I could um, as a kid or, or a youngster. I guess that's a better way of putting it. Uh, and I've been playing around with it. I, the Fire Sign Theater uh, was a big, a big help to me in that direction because it told me that comedy could be done only through audio and yet create, you know, plays and whatnot. Um, but I guess it was really the Im impressions, Im Im imitations. Uh, I, I was practicing in college and I, I got cast as uh, uh, Humphrey Bogart in Play It Again, Sam, because I had a very good Bogart at that time. It was you who killed John. She, Parker found out about it. She killed him too, but that wasn't good enough. No, you were coming after me. You knew you couldn't do it while I was facing you, so you figured you'd get me to turn my back. That's all there is to it. W.C. Fields, Groucho Marx. Uh, oh, I, I know this won't sound very uh, realistic to you because you're too young to remember, but there was a president of the United States, a certain Richard M. Nixon, and you won't have him to kick around anymore. Uh, these were, were, you know, relevant at that time. Mm -hmm. we're, we're talking ancient times uh, by your perspective. Um, but I guess that's really the beginning. And then, of course, with my own radio show, uh, you know, had to do more than one, more than one voice, obviously, in sketch after sketch. And so that developed. And then I, I, uh, uh, I had, I've had a bizarre life, uh, a very unusual one. I got a scholarship to come abroad. I'm an American, as you might have mm -hmm. noticed. Uh, I got a scholarship to come abroad for a semester to, to Rome, Italy. And I was fascinated. It was, you know, a real mind blower. You know, it, it, it uh, expanded my mind immensely. It was a different way of doing things completely. And one of the things that I was competent, competent at, I only had $200 in traveler's checks, which even back then was not nearly enough for a whole semester. But I, I listened to the radio because, you know, that's what I did back then. And I was looking at first, I, I was going to learn Italian from the radio. Then I heard that there was an English language radio station. And I looked it up in the then phone book. And it wasn't far, very far away from the rooming house where they, the, the university had me put up. And so I went over there and I explained to them I had, you know, experience. And I started, I got my first job doing that at night, a, a, a night, a, a night, a night DJ. My career bloomed. I had a hit TV show within a, a year and a hit song uh, within a year. Uh, so that, that, you know, that, that set me in that direction. But I still continued doing the radio show for a while. Uh, but the real uh, experience in audio, in terms of voices, came uh, when a friend of mine, an actor friend of mine, said, you know, you're good at all those voices you do on the radio. Why don't you try dubbing? Uh, and he introduced me uh, to a dubbing director. And, of course, it took me a little, little bit of, of practice to, to get to the point where I could look at the, the lines and fit them into the guy's mouth. Because you can't look at them. you got to memorize them. And you gotta, you got to see the mouth movements. And you work it out how it's going to work out so that it comes out and it sounds credible. And there were a lot, of, you know, and a lot of different voices. They needed young voices here at the time, too. Uh, so that helped me. And I already had the work permit, uh, thanks to the, 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 um, the other showbiz stuff I did. I did movies. I did TV. 
and so I had I had uh, I had ran records too. So and I, I sang, and so um, I had the I had the, the permits and everything already for for the dubbing cooperative, and they they loved me, and and I started on doing dubbing movies, usually really bad ones. The first one was the craziest submarine in the world, which was an attempt at comedy, I suppose. But it was, you know, good for practice. It was a good, good way to go. Yeah. In uh, the later 80s, or I guess it was the later, yeah, later, later 80s, yes, uh, I got specialized uh, in B-movies uh, for bad guys. And in that time, there were only two real voices that they wanted. Uh, one was an American redneck, and one was a kind of Nazi kind of guy, you know, even though it would not explain, they wanted that sound. There are 10,000 volts seeing through those wires. Touch them and you are roasted. And didn't necessarily, they didn't necessarily say they're Nazis, but you know, that was the idea. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I got good at that. Uh, and a lot of those, those came through the dubbing sala. And so that kind of became my specialty, bad guys. Uh, the redneck was easy. Of course, today it would just be one voice because now the rednecks are Nazis. Yeah, uh, they're cutting me out. But anyway, Berlusconi cut cut every dub English language dubber out of business when he took over all media here back in 1994. Oh, he didn't get. He wasn't able to conquer it completely until 2000. But uh, that was pretty much the death of of English language dubbing and the later Italian dubbing in Rome. Uh, they're all done in his studios in Turin now. Mm. So uh, I, saw, I saw you had a lot of Italian films and what have you on the on your um, credits and and, yeah. and and that so that's um, dubbing, is it? Yeah. yeah. No, it's so some of it is acting too. I, okay. I, I act. I act. But uh, in fact, I, I keep a lot of dubbing work out of that because I don't want to give people the idea that he's just a dubber. Because mm. people tend to think that dubbing is was I'm sorry to say great because when you didn't have another gig, you know, there you go. Uh, if you do have another gig, you know, they, they get somebody else, but you, you know, you didn't lose, you know, no, no one, uh, no one felt bad about it. You know, it's great. You had a better gig, you know, uh, if you were good and competent at it, you know, um, you got it, you mm. got the part. In fact, that, that would come in, in later <coughs> in my career too. Very important, but that's really how I started. And of course, from that, uh, they, 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 I got a call from the dubbing, uh, Co cooperative to do a, a radio uh, a radio play now, for Americans that's really unusual because there just weren't any yeah, except for the comedy bits I did you know in in Philadelphia that was about it but it wasn't like a radio play but the Italians did that and they needed uh, they needed a Brit they couldn't get a Brit but you know I I sufficed uh, you know looking for the right and and pr correct pronunciation a little posh for a Mister I call him Mister as a coach. Um, and he, it was the, the story was of the first uh, Italian uh, football team, and and how they're all all the kids are excited about it, and, and we end up saying, well, who knows, you know, uh, one day Italy may actually win a, a championship if we keep on like this, you know, it's good. It, it's a it's a great future for all of the football in Italy. But it was it was a thrill for me to be able to do that. Anyway, it was I could say in my private resume. Who, that nobody cares about, of course, but me. But I have done a radio play, a professional radio play that went, actually went out nationally. Mm. Um, from that, of course, also from the, the dubbing, I did started doing narrations, uh, which I don't know, I, you know, again, I, I, I'd done radio for a long time. And a, a lot of the sketches we did were fake commercials. So I knew just how to go about it. Ha, 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 ha. And that's really, I guess, uh, that was really my, my beginnings. But we also did some serious films, you know. We did uh, The Story of Fichal, which was uh, uh, won an Academy Award. Um, I also did backwards dubbing, too, which was, uh, I would sing, you know, Italian singers uh, always wanted to have uh, uh, an English version of their work, but they wouldn't be bothered to learn English. So I was good with my tonalities. And I could imitate them, but have them sing in English. The, the, the words weren't very good, you know, but they had an English. It's also weird, too, because, you know, you, you go on TV, they lip sync to it. And then, I got to do, 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 do And then the guy comes on. Uh, yeah, that was my third song. Uh, it, was fun. <laughs> it doesn't fit at all. Because, you know, that was also a time when people smoked like fiends. Yeah. But anyway, you know, it worked well enough. 
Um, I guess in terms of audio, this is this is really my background. Yeah, uh, I, I, I still do narration for films, uh, industrial films. I still do dubbing occasionally uh, when it comes about, but again, it doesn't come out come about very much anymore. Um, but I enjoy doing it, and I can, and of course, in, in my regular comedy, uh, I, I I have an impos- impos- that, that, that a voice that I use, mm-hmm. which isn't my own. Uh, but I guess really that's that's my background. Uh, hmm. So how how did that lead into? Because uh, let me look at my notes. So I think you you a fairly short stint in video game voice acting, from what I can see. So I've got. Not, not really. No. Uh, well, okay. I, I guess I did. I guess you could say that. I, I went from about 1990 to about 1998. Okay. I, I still do them occasionally, but they're occasional work. Mm-hmm. I did one uh, about s- six months ago. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Uh, 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 the I, I don't know why they did this, but the, it was done in Poland. Um. Anyway, they they had actors uh, doing. Uh, uh, what they call they put the, the balls on their faces and and whatnot. Oh yeah, and 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 it, to animate it all so that when it went to 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 game, uh, but they had weird weird accents, so they wanted something in this is going to those macho man kind of get it, sergeant, or die, you know this kind of thing. Uh, so I mean there there is when there is work there, it's great, uh, yeah. but it's not it's not my my. Uh, only form of income. Mm. It, it, I, I, you know, I, I never really considered it to be. I was glad to have it. Of course, you know, because in show business, regular show business, there are periods when there's no gigs. Sure. It's like being Spider Man, you know? You got to make sure you have enough web fluid and you got to make sure that there's another building there because otherwise, uh oh, you know, mm. real Spider Man would only have like a, a few a few blocks in Manhattan, lower Manhattan, that he, he could operate comfortably in, I think. But you know, when you're uh, when you're a freelance, that's pretty much the case, unless you've got millions of dollars. And in that case, people just drop off anyway. And, you know, they yeah. just say, "Fuck it, I don't need this shit. I got millions of dollars." Yeah, I don't blame them either. No. So, <laughs> but so, anyway. I, so as far as Lucas Arts goes, Lucas Film Games, mm-hmm. um, I've, I think your first was Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. Mm-hmm. Which came out in ninety two, but they didn't do the talky version with the voices until ninety three. Um, that sounds right. Yeah, and I think in the credits it just says voices, so it doesn't tell me really anything. I don't know if you oh, remember. Doctor Jones, <laughs> you meet again, Doctor Jones. Not so fast, Doctor Jones. You know, I mean, these are these are good things too because you know you're even porn. You know, they, we'd occasionally have the uh, the um, Bavarian fuck flicks. Oh yeah, the, the, and they were really elaborate too. You know, they had costumes from the various eras and horses, and you know, not as you might apply. Um, but you know, it's something you can do and be anonymous at. Mm. Uh, I did a lot of cartoons too. There was a load, a load of cartoons in the in the in the nineties. Uh, most of them, you know, Korean uh, based, but produced by Italians, so that they counted as Italian production, but. Yeah, loads and loads, but they, it was, I would call them, you know, grandma's little mistake because I used to sell them here on the uh, it, it newsstands and they would, you know, rip off Disney. You know, if uh-huh. the, he came, the, Disney came out with the Lion King, they had Leo, the king, the Lion King of the jungle, you know, mm. uh, or the stuff that's in public domain like uh, um, uh, Mulan. Uh, oh, geez, there's a load of uh, Hercules. That was a bizarre one. You know, uh, Disney did Hercules in the 90s. Yeah. And uh, the Korean version, or the Italian version, really, I guess, because they approved the, the script. Uh, it was a series. And, you know, in the story of Hercules, he, he, he is driven mad uh, by a jealous goddess, and he kills his wife and children with his bare hands. Now, Disney avoided that scene, but we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, or, 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 or we did, we did a, uh, three versions of the Titanic in cartoon form, and we did the New Testament, which was weird, mm. uh, because they were uh, taking all sorts of liberties in the script. I don't know where that was meant for. Uh, and I remember suggesting, well, you know, th- this is not in the Bible. You know, you, no, Ita- you know, Italians are quite 
sticklers on that sometimes, aren't they? That kind of. Well, thing. the thing is, this is this was an American production. Uh, okay, they were dubbing it in Italy for, because it was cheap, I think. But it was a, it was an American production, a, a, a very dubious one. I think it might be, you know, uh, something nasty behind it. And, and the, you know, they were the, that kind of thing was rare, but it does come up from time to time. Political propaganda that's meant to be seen somewhere somewhere in in in, in the outback, um, and the fact that it is you know a real movie or a real cartoon, real what well, is reality? Uh, that they, they're used as propaganda tools. Mm. Uh, and I, I had that impression. What I, what I got, I got, uh, uh, I got beat out for Jesus on that by a Jewish guy, which I thought was appropriate. Yeah. Um, but you know, see, he he, he uh, couldn't make it for all because he was very good. Did Greg Price, Greg Price, Greg Snegoff, excuse me. Uh, really, really good at this kind of work. I'm sure. You, I'm sure you you've probably heard of him being such an expert in this kind of thing. He's no, a, no, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm no expert beyond just researching for this, this, this game or this kind of small era of games, really. But mm-hmm. yeah. anyway, he was very good, but he couldn't make it. For, he had some other thing to do, and so I, I could fit into him because I could imitate his voice pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, we had a good uh, director for that, and uh, I suggested, well, you know, since they're already taking the liberties here, why don't we go full fledged? You know. Oh, Mr. Wabby. Shh. Be very, very quiet. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Doc? Yeah. But he didn't go for that at all. So we let that go. But it's weird. You know, I, I, don't, think, I don't think you should have sacred scripts or scripture, anybody's sacred scripture in cartoon form. It kind of loses, it puts it mm. in the same category, especially with cheap animation, because it puts it in the, you know, in the realm of G.I. Joe or the Transformers. Now, even in a child's mind, it's it's not supposed to be that. There's supposed to be sacred scripture, right? These are things people believe in, people give their principles from. Not you know, <laughs> the same voices who are going after the mighty mind. Mm. You know. Uh, but, you know, I enjoyed doing a lot of bad guys in that. I did uh, Sandal Khan. I did... Uh, uh, all well, all sorts of bad guys in in, in mo- those movie series. And I, having said all that, I'm very glad to have had that experience, and you know to have done it. But again, I, there's a lot that I don't put on my resume, so as I don't get uh, start typecast, mm. as, you know, just a type a dubber. Now, now of course things have turned around. You know, back in the old days, there was no credits for that at all. Now you have uh, superstars who are just do that. Yes. Uh, and you have, you know, stars from Hollywood who who uh, are good actors, uh, but are really poor dubbers. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of uh, Roberto Benigni's Pinocchio. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> he had some very major A- A-list actors do the voices in English. And they were good actors, but lousy dubbers. It's not the same thing. You know, it's a, it's similar. You use the same principles, but n- it's not the same thing. Mm. Giving your voice to someone else. Uh, it means you, you, you get a question of rhythm. You get a question of dialect. <clears throat> you know, it's, it's another monster. And, and although they, they spent millions on that, you know, the, the product they got, I, did, I never saw it, but I read the critics, the, the critics in America talking about how bad the dubbing was. Mm. And they're, you know, they're, they're, they were all A-list actors who did it. Right. Go figure. Mm. Sometimes, sometimes you can get more for your money by spending less. Indeed. But that's life. Mm. <laughs> mm. So, so how how did uh, how did you actually start um, doing voiceovers for LucasArts for for games for them? Do you remember? Yeah, well, I'm, yeah, it was a, a strange connection. I just moved to Los Angeles from Rome because I figured I'd, I'd, I'd uh, finished a big project for the, the Scala of Milano, a very high, highbrow uh, theater tour. <clears throat> but it was clear that, you know, I wasn't going to be allowed to go any further than I already had. And I was getting older, so if I was going to go to Los Angeles and try it, I'd better do it. And that's what I did. But then I got a call back to do, uh, well, anyway, in Los Angeles, I, I, I had a friend uh, from Rome who, was, who moved at about the same time, who was a photographer. And in his office, uh, there was a lady waiting, and 
you know, we started talking and uh, she said, you know, she had a, her, her daughter uh, was, was doing uh, a play in Rome in English. It was one of these plays where you follow the characters around. It's never the same thing twice. It was about an, an Italian story about uh, Tamara. In fact, Tamara uh, uh, was, it, it's a story of, of a villa in uh, northern Italy, uh, in the, the Republic of Salo. And you have your choice of following the characters around the, the, this villa and, and seeing, and they all come, all, all the scenes come together at once. So it's, it's, it, it was a really clever little thing. Anyway, I made friends with her and then she started working at LucasArts and she, you know, obviously knew I, uh, I had done dubbing, dub, done dubbing and I'd done, you know, some video games as well. And she called me and I auditioned. It was interesting that though, uh, when we did, when we did it, we the audition. It was at uh, the, the, the Skywalker um, uh, Studios in Los Angeles. Now, the auditions were done there, but the actual uh, voice work was done in a much smaller studio because they had, didn't have the budget to work, to work in their own LucasArts studio. Hmm. Uh, I, th I thought that was a bit odd. I think it was done at Room 222 Studios. That's Hollywood. right. Mm. Yeah, just off of uh, Hollywood Boulevard. Hmm. Wow, your 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 uh, research is very good. Thanks. My compliments. Um. So, uh, so do you remember who who you were dealing with at, at Lucas? Because I think it was Tamlin Barra, who was actually yes. she was actually Italian. Yes, yeah, she was Italo-American. Uh, yes. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. I, yes. Yeah. I know she uh, Tamlin. She... Tamlin, but I for her, for her friends we called her Cara. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you so, have any idea what happened to her? No, I, I've I've done a little bit of googling to see if there's anything around, and I ca I can't find anything. Yeah, um, uh, I I left. I came back from the to, to the state to the to Italy for to do my own TV program at request for an international satellite net, and I'd just gone through the 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 earthquake in '94 in right. Northridge and we were living in North Hollywood which was about a mile away from the epicenter so we got wiped out almost completely and with it uh, all the work I had I was doing vague gigs in Vegas that disappeared I had a, a sitcom uh, that, that uh, uh, Dick Clark I don't know do you, have you heard of him yeah name? yeah sure he's very big in the states he wanted to do a, a sitcom with the Z character and oh, wow. that fell through uh, and everything fell through the, the, the gigs in Vegas fell through uh, everything and then I got you know that's an opportunity to come back here, which my wife and I were both happy for, mm -hmm. to have my own show. And then the Japanese and the Brits woke up to my work. And I did uh, the Jack D show. Uh, I did oh, the yeah. Stage. I did um, the Saturday Zoo with Jonathan Wass. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did several big programs for the Japanese. And, uh, you know, so I found I had more work over on this side of the, uh, of the Atlantic than I did over there. Mm -hmm. And I found also that when they did want me over there, they pay for me. Yeah, I, I did. We'd gone through the riots. We'd gone through the earthquake, and I had a little girl on the way, um, who's now a grown-up lady, but, mm -hmm. and she has a sister. And Rome is a much better place for raising kids than L.A. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. So you know, that's kind of the way. That's kind of how my career has worked out. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, I I remember you very distinctly from. Obviously, I'm from the UK and from TV um, back then in the in the nineties. I'm glad. Yeah. I hope you like yeah. what you saw. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was watching some the other day, just kind of a, a, as a refresher and had me laughing. Um, so, uh, so when, when you do um, something like a video game, cause uh, obviously like these adventure games, you know, the conversation can go in like five different directions. So are they giving you um, like the context of the, the scene and the lines and, and stuff? Yes, they are. Uh, and, you know, sometimes it's done uh, a, a vuoto, or, you know, with no, no visual uh, input at all. And sometimes it's done, like I said, like this last one, the Polish one, um, you have guys, in, you know, with the balls on their face. So you, and you you fit it into their their facial, and you try to fit fit also the the uh, in, intent too. Yeah. Uh, sometimes that can that can be funny, but uh, you know it, it's it, it's you know it's nice to have a little 
a visual input. It's also nice to do, be doing it like you're doing a real cartoon, which is, you know, you do the voice first and then they animate it to your, your face. Yeah. Um, well, I heard, I heard um, that they had a thing for, particularly for Stared Tentacle, that they, they'd written a thing that basically just read the volume and it would move the mouth based on that. So it was kind of an automated thing. I don't know if that's how well, there's there, there are now AI programs that are supposed to give you uh, perfect um, uh, voiceovers, right? Uh, which is pathetic. Mm. It just doesn't work. I mean, it will eventually, I'm sure. But as you know, the best I've seen now is just still without a soul in the voice, because yeah. it does it can it can interpret what it should be the correct pronunciation but it cannot and you know give you the inflection right but it, it'll happen i'm sure you know mm -hmm. ai that's 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 going to put us all out of work i know i don't i don't think i like it it's scary mm. it's really scary you know i've been working as a robot now for 40 years and i did a lot of research in fact i sometimes speak at universities about it because wow. uh, I did the, the, the research because I'm too, too right for the character, hoping to have the opportunity to give something more than a, a monologue um, or a sketch. And uh, uh, the robot stories inevitably end with the robots turning around. Robots also are uh, the physical uh, counterpart of AI. And there's no, no and it's already the this, this, this story is always that yeah. that's the robot story the structure is there it's been, it's been the same since the very first robot story in the 1920s was that Met metropolis or something no uh metropolis no. was actually a little uh, almost 10 years later oh okay a play uh, uh kpec uh, a, a dutch and uh, not dutch uh a czech playwright oh because uh, the the term comes from you czech, are. czech yeah. doesn't it yeah 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 it does robota yeah, meaning work, worker or something. Yes, a low of lower. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, drudge work. Uh, the uh, African Americans have another word for that, and it starts with an N. Mm. So you know, again, if if you again, I I, I tried psyching out what what AI would be like, you know, once they get independent, and how they might put it together. Now, of course, I've had to modify a lot because it's it's come true in the meantime but basic principles and the way we think of them and we're programming programming them not really programming them. we we we're giving them we're taking them off the leash and even if we don't not taking them off the leash they have the brains to take themselves off the leash yeah that's and the thing once the genie is out of the bottle baby there's no putting it back it's skynet situation mm. yes or or worse mm. well, i don't know if it is any worse than being yeah <clears throat> Um, if you don't mind, I've, I've got a little clip. I, I, um, I've put together, uh, what is it? One, two, three, four. I think four characters that I definitely know that you voiced in mm -hmm. this game. So there's this guy called Ed Edison. There's Ben Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, who's obviously um, integral to uh, American history. We've got a cigar salesman who is kind of, that's kind of like another version in time of that same character. And then Thomas Jefferson as well i think you voiced but i also got a clip of these two brothers they're called ned and jed and i don't that nowhere on the internet does it credit who they are but i just wondered if it was you um to be frank which i am i don't know the science of electrodynamics much like your mind apparently is still in a state of relative infancy thomas my name is thomas and this my chubby friend is a time capsule but I can't remember much about that period anyway. My psychotherapist thinks something traumatic happened to me back then. I tell you, we novelty good salesmen know how to have a good time. And if I just play this clip, it's just this is of two brothers, and uh, you know, if, if you can't remember, um, you can't can't remember. But um, yeah, I was just <laughs> intrigued on this one because it's uh, the, the 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 credits don't say anything about it anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, I assure you that we are both real, but we are neither I one of us McCoy. Yeah. It's hard to it's hard to hard to tell with that one, I think. Yeah, well, you know, so much to, so much of doing voices and, and dubbing as well. You is you don't you know you, you go in, you do your bit, and you you're you're off to do something else. Mm. 
you know it's yeah. it, it's the nature of the beast but it's also the, the wonderful thing about it because you're not you know you're not sitting in the cold rainy uh, um, out outback uh, waiting for the sunshine so that you can take a shot you know or make it fast because you know it's gonna, it's gonna rain again which is oftentimes what you do when you're not making a movie um especially here in italy they, they wait until the worst weather possible before we shoot anything outside here i don't know what it is but anyway so how much freedom do they give you with something like that where you know you get given it maybe a, a picture or a brief description of the character it did it depends on the production it really yeah. does okay Some, sometimes you know they want they want gi joe or that or in my case usually a bad guy you know yeah. they want that they want it clear. They want to know. <laughs> Dollars, mind you, not even pounds. <laughs> anyway, it really does. It depends on the production. Yeah. Yeah. Have you, have you ever played any of the games you've been in? No, I haven't. Uh, at the, you know, at the time, uh, uh, the, it was discs and discs and discs. Uh, and when I was working with LucasArts, I got all sorts of their other work, you know, like uh, Monkey Island and whatnot, because I, I asked for it. But I, my computers at that time didn't my, weren't big enough, didn't have a big enough memory to deal with it. So I let it go. I was never, I was, ne I'm, I've never been good with computers. I've been making fun of high tech for, you know, years. That's and now true. the gods of high tech uh, are taking, uh, you know, are getting their revenge. Mm. Maybe, I mean, maybe they'll spare you. You never I know. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> um so yeah i mean does it does it surprise you that um you know things like the old lucas things from 30 years ago uh, uh, which were at the time considered considered even by the people who made them obscure little video games are you surprised they're still kind of talked about today and big and uh, no um again you know it's uh, it, 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 in the beginning of anything like that um you have a, a freedom that you don't have once the uh, the genre is established. You know you don't know where you're going, so you're you're you know you're uh, you're, you're taking risks that you might not otherwise. It's interesting for me. Like I said, I did I did the Bogart Boys, but I did the Bogart Boys really well because I worked in a movie theater that 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 played the Bogart movies. And if you listen to movies of that era, he's talking really fast. You know, it was you who killed Johnson. Parker found so you killed him too, but that wasn't good enough. No, you were coming after me. You know, if, 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 again, the, the what is it? The, the big sleep. I still haven't understood who killed who, but it doesn't matter. You know, they did it with such style. And I'm imagining, you know, people read, I assume, a lot more then, and that was a hit book, you know, a bestseller. So they're not really going there to hear you know, exactly what happened. They're, they're kind of hearing, they're, they're, they're just getting away from regular life and, you know, they're slipping it in. Dialogue in movies, by the way, back in the in the uh, 30s, what was it? Uh, two di two pages of dialogue for every minute. Wow. Now it's you know one for every five minutes. Mm. Uh, they, uh, it was a, the the economic depression, and of course, you know, the Nazis were rising here. But it was a moment, although it was a very dark moment, it was also a very energized moment. You know, people were energized. Mm. Uh, now we're lazy. Or really lazy. A boom, shh, ah, bang, 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 bang. Stop where you are. Bang, bang. Psh, psh, yeah. Boom, psh, ah, er, you know. Mm. But I love you. Bang, bang. <laughs> ah, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I hope I've been useful to you, Pete. You have. You've been very useful, and I really appreciate your time. And what are you up to now? Now, can I put any plugs or, you know, where people can follow you and what have you? Yeah, please uh, do put in plugs for my um, uh, social media. Uh, I'm uh, uh, what on, on uh, Facebook. I'm Mr. Zed or David Zed or Zed Robot because mm -hmm. here in Italy, you know, I've had quite a following, but I'd, I'd like to have more English language people following me. Uh, on uh, Instagram, I'm uh, Z Robot at Z Robot. Uh, I, on my website, uh, which is just bare bones, there there are the other things the, the I, that I don't remember myself because you know I don't I don't do it very much. And I'm not I, I, I the working with a computer for me is really uh, a pain. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> but I do pu- I do I do publish and I need I need followers because I do have projects and and working now with the Americans on projects they look at how much fat many fo- how many followers you have and not at the project yeah you know they have no clue you know as much as you know I'm an old man and I realize a, a lot of things I have no clues about thank goodness I have two daughters uh, but but you know Hollywood has always been out well in my lifetime it's always been out of touch. Uh, I had a friend, by the way, who uh, who worked with uh, 20th Century Fox, and you know that the, when they, they came back with Star Wars movies, uh, yeah. uh, she said uh, we weren't expecting that at all, and that's you know they, they did the second tr- trilogy, but you know we, you know who could have foreseen this? Um, just about anybody, you know. I mean those 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 movies had a great following back then, you know. Mm. And how could you, who owned the rights to it, how could you not know that? And there's a famous memo at, at 20th Century Fox when they gave Lucas the chance to do uh, Star Wars. Uh, just before it came out, they, they lamented that they went with this, this, uh, this science fiction instead of going with the movie called Car Wash. Right. Have you ever heard of Car Wash? There was sure. a hit song, yeah. you know, uh, done. Those got those cars because you never see to stop coming. And it had some big names in it. Richard Pryor, it had George Carlin. Mm-hmm. I never seen. I've never seen it, uh, but no one thinks of that movie anymore. No. But, but Star Wars, you know, beyond massive, yeah, yeah, but beyond massive, and, and and on a very reasonable budget, considering today, anyway. Mm. You think of 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 uh, uh, American Graffiti, you know, that was supposed to lose money. The whole point of it was to lose money. They only gave Lucas the, the chance to use the studios at night. So he wrote a story that happens all at night because it's supposed to be something that's a, a tax write-off. He failed. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's, that's, that's brilliant. But show business is full of shit like that. Yeah. Shit. And, and work, having worked in Hollywood, it's like, in, at least in my period in Hollywood, it's like, a, 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 this is a no new idea it's a new idea free zone excuse me and we're going to keep it that way yeah even when you describe a project you have to compare it to something that has no just, yeah but you know it's well, like the beverly hills meets beverly hills 90210 meets uh, the beverly hillbillies yeah or just rehashing <laughs> stuff that doesn't need rehashing you know yeah yes endlessly <sighs> yeah but thank, thank you. you thank you for your time thank you pete and uh, you know keep in touch yes we'll do Thank you.